In this video, I'd like to give you an introduction to NXPM Stack, a project that I've been working on over the last few months. After I've given a short introduction, I'll show you how to install and run the project. After that, we'll use a few generators to create a new model in our backend and admin section, allowing us to quickly create, read, update, and delete the data. Once that model is in place, I'll show you how to add a new property to the model, and I'll finally show you how to display the items in a public list. I won't go into detail about how I structured the project or how any of the technologies work, but you should be able to find a lot of that in my YouTube channel. And if not, don't hesitate to reach out. NXPM Stack is a tool that allows you to create working full stack apps in a few commands. The apps that are created by NXPM are based on NX Workspace and have a very opinionated structure that allows you to scale up to very large apps. NXPM comes out of the box with cookie-based authentication, end-to-end -end tests for the API, automated formatting and linting, and it's set up to be easily deployed to hosting providers like Heroku or any other service that can host a Docker container. It currently creates an app that uses Prisma and Nest.js in the backend and hosts a GraphQL API. The front end is an Angular, and I hope to add support for building mobile apps using Ionic very, very soon. In the future, I aim to add more variation in the technology stack, with, for instance, support for a backend in Go, a front end in React, and a mobile app in NativeScript. All these technologies will mix and match, so this allows the developer to generate their own dream stack. The last thing to note is that NXPM is a developer tool. That means that there are currently no runtime dependencies on NXPM. However, after project creation, you can still benefit from NXPM as it offers tools to further build out the project using the same convention. Now let's see how we can use it. To install NXPM stack, we start by installing the package at NXPM CLI globally. This will give you access to the NXPM stack command, and at the time of recording, I'm on version 4.14.2. Next up, we run NXPM stack init and pass in the name of the project. This name will be used as the NPM scope for your packages, so this will often be the name of your organization or project. This command does a few things for us generates a new NX workspace, it installs the dependencies, it runs the installation, and it executes some final commands to leave your workspace in a clean and ready to go state. Once it's done, it prints out the instruction on how to continue. First, we CD into the folder, we run yarn setup, and after that, we can start both the API and web in dev mode. Let's go ahead and do just that. The setup will prepare your .env file, spin up a Postgres server in a Docker container, and it will set up the database and load some sample data. After that, the project should be ready to go, so let's open it up in our editor. Let's open package.json and check the script section. In here, you should see the things you need to run. There's dev API to run the backend, dev SDK to run the SDK generator, and dev web to run the front end. Let's start these all up and make sure it's all running without errors. That looks all good, so let's go ahead and visit the front end. In here, we can log in with the credentials that are defined in the sample data. And after that, we see a simple dashboard. Right now in the app, there are two sections available. The first one is the account management section where a user can edit their own details. Let me go ahead and update my name and avatar. And after a refresh, I can see that being updated. The second part is the admin. In here, we can see our users, change their passwords or details, and add new users. Now let's move on and add some more functionality to this base project. With the generation of our project, it also generated a few workspace generators. These generators offer a convenient way to run code in your workspace. In fact, the yarn setup command we ran earlier is implemented using this workspace setup generator, which in turn calls this Prisma Seed. Go check it out, it's really quite simple to work with and it helps a lot in quickly building your apps in a consistent way. The one I wanna focus on right now is the CRUD generator. When we open this file, we can see that this is still very much work in progress. At this moment, it only prints the commands you need to run, but I'll automate this in the future. For now though, I'll run the commands manually. First thing to run is nxg at nxpm slash stack colon api dash CRUD with the name of the model product in our case. This will generate our product model in Prisma and generate the API libraries that interact with Prisma to manage the data and that expose the data over GraphQL. When running this generator, it informs us that we need to run yarn Prisma apply and restart our database. When we switch over to our API, we can see that it cannot resolve one of the packages that got created. 
The reason for this is that the API server currently does not pick up any changes in the tsconfig, so we have to give it a gentle push. First though, let's apply the Prisma changes by running yarn Prisma apply, and that will confirm that it made our database in sync with the schema. Now we can go to our API and restart it, and we see that it now does load our API product feature module. Loading in this model triggers our GraphQL API schema to change. So that triggers the SDK, which in turn triggers the web application to restart. It all compiles without errors, so it looks like we're good to go to the final step here. We run the exact same command, but instead of API CRUD, we run web CRUD. We wait a bit for our dev servers to catch up with all these changes, but finally it should compile successfully. When we now switch back to our browser, what we see here is a new products item in the header and a new item appeared in the admin section. In here we don't have any content yet, but we can go to create product, enter the name of the product, click submit, and lo and behold, a new item appears. I'll add some more, but you'll get the drill. Now, while this is a nice start, it's very unlikely that you're going to have an entity with only a name field. So let's open schema.prisma, find our product model, and add a price property. Type int, and set the default value to zero. After that, we open a terminal and run yarn prisma apply to sync the schema to the database. Next up, we open the file product.model.ts, where we'll add a new property called price with type number. And because a number in JavaScript can be either float or int, we need to specify that for this field, the return type is int. And this gets imported from at nest.js slash GraphQL. Now we open our feature product.graphql file. In this file, we define the GraphQL operations that we want to make available to our front end. In here, in the product details fragment, we'll add the price property. Changing this triggers the SDK to generate, which in turn triggers the dev server. Still no errors here, so we can switch back to the browser and we can see that our item now has a property price with its default value zero. Now another thing you probably want to update is the forms where we can create and edit our products. To do this, we start on the backend. We open the admin create product.input.ts that lives under lips API product data access. And in this class, we add a new property called price, type number, return type in from Nest.js GraphQL. Next, we open admin update product.input.ts and add the same property here. But in the case of the update, we want to make this a non required nullable field. Then, in our API product data access service, where these inputs are being used, we will update our call to Prisma to include these new fields. The second part is the front end. Let's open admin product create.component.ts and look for the fields array. Let's duplicate this field here, change its type to a number and the key and label to price and set a min value of zero. Then we pick up this field, we open admin product edit component.ts and add it to the fields array here and make it optional. We can now add a new item and give them their price directly. The last thing I'd like to show you is how to publish these products on a public endpoint, for instance, a front end or a mobile app. In order to do that, we're going to add a new resolver to our API. In lips API project feature, you find the API project feature admin resolver. This is where all the admin operations live, and we're going to create a new one for all our public or unauthenticated endpoints. To keep with the convention, the file name should be api-product-feature-public.resolver.ts and it will export a class API product feature public resolver. In here, we'll add a new endpoint public products. In order to make sure that Nest.js recognizes this as a resolver, we need to decorate it with the add resolver class from at Nest.js slash graph. Next thing to do here is inject our API product data access server. After that, we go to our public products method and decorate it with the add query decorator. And we pass in the return type of product array and set nullable to true. Inside this message, we make it return this.service.public products, which currently doesn't exist. So let's create that. And in here, we simply return this.data.product.findMany, which is calling into the product model on our Prisma client. Now to make it all work, we open API product feature module and add our new resolver to the providers array and import it. 
With this in place, we can now open our feature product.graphql file and define the usage of this public products here, just like any other queries. Once that's done, the SDK and the web app should recompile without any issues. And we can move on to the front end where we open web product feature.component.ts. In here, we'll inject the web core data access service and create a new property called products, dollar sign, and assign it to the this.data.publicproducts method that got generated by the SDK. And then we call it using the async pipe in the template and make sure it all renders out. When we now switch to the browser, we see the list of products being shown here. Now, this is probably the quickest way to show some data in the front end, but it's not the best practice. I recommend you checking out the admin section to see how it's done there and let that inspire your next addition to the project. And that's all I have for you today. I'm super excited to share this all with you and I'd love to hear feedback on what you think about this. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the section below here or ask me on Twitter or Discord. I'll leave the links in the description. In any case, have a great day and I hope to see you in the next one.